This is a demonstration of the ITD feature uh, on the Nexus 9000 platform. In this situation, we are looking at uh, Nexus 9000 with ITD load balancing to the ASA firewalls in a firewall on a stick topology. This is a big, uh, quick overview of what the topology looks like. We've got a traffic generator which has uh, traffic pumping into the Nexus 9000. The 9000s will use ITD to load balance that traffic to the ASA, uh, one of four of these. That traffic will then be redirected back in through the firewall and then land back here on the other side of the traffic generator. Since this is uh, two-way traffic uh, and we are dealing with stateful uh, firewalls, we need to make sure that the traffic, when it responds back, that they land back at the same ASA uh, firewalls as they were originally sent through so that they can maintain the state and the connections. That's uh, important. So in this situation, we will be dealing with uh, an ITD with two policies, one for the inside firewall uh, side of the traffic and one for the outside firewall side of the traffic. So with that said, we're going to uh, go to the switches. Here we're looking at the actual ITD configuration. It's pretty uh, sparse as far as needing uh, amount of configuration required. It's quite minimalistic. We are seeing here uh, two device groups being configured. I've got ITD device group firewall inside, and then I have firewall outside. Uh, in here, you can see that I am probing through ICMP the nodes, and these are the nodes being defined by IP addresses. Uh, please note that they are different in IP address range because one's for the inside of the firewall, one is for the outside of the firewall. Here we have the actual ITD policies being configured. Here I have the inside policy. It is referencing in the device group firewall inside, which is up here. We are seeing a virtual IP address, which is the IP address that my clients will be pumping traffic to. It is referencing the VLAN that uh, is an ingress interface. So this is actually using an SVI as an ingress interface. I have a fail action node, a reassign, which means that if any of my nodes fail, the buckets that are assigned to those nodes will be uh, moved to the next available active node. And I am uh, allocating 16 buckets. By default, this would have only created four buckets since there are four nodes, but I want to granularize my traffic a little bit more. So I am actually creating 16 buckets. So these 16 buckets will be divvied up to these four nodes. Therefore, you're looking at a four bucket per node configuration. I want to call your attention to the outside policy, which is very similar to the inside policy with just a few exceptions. In the outside policy, you can see I'm referencing the outside. Uh, there is no virtual IP address. This is dealing with the return tr path traffic. So the ingress is a different uh, SVI. And it is doing a fail action uh, node reassign. So that way, if one node goes down, the buckets have to move as well. But in this case, if you see the load balancing method, I have now got a method by destination versus here, it was just load balancing with the number of buckets. Here I am designating that the load balancing method has to be by destination address and not the source address, which is by default the method of load balancing. Again, I am load balancing 16 IP or 16 buckets. And by no shutting these, you are enabling the feature or turning on the policy. If I then do a show ITD, I can see uh, the outputs here. In this case, uh, I'm looking at the inside policy. You can see that the state is active. The number of buckets being, uh, on this uh, policy is 16. And then uh, you can quickly see what you know, interface is being configured. Here we are seeing that uh, we've got by nodes here, node one, two, three, and four. Uh, four has not been shown on screen yet, but it's there. We can see the status of the, the node and we can see the, which bucket has been allocated to the node. So in this case, you can see that I've got buckets one here, five, nine, and 13. Uh, let's see if I can scroll up and get the fourth node in, yes, in the same screen. So in this situation, you can see node one had one, 
Node 2 had bucket 2, node 3, 3, node 4 had bucket 4. Had this been a default configuration, that would have been the, uh, the way the buckets would have been allocated, created, and allocated to the nodes, just four buckets for four nodes. But since I specified 16 buckets, I have four buckets per node to be allocated. So the fourth one was allocated, then up here comes back to fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. As you can see, since we're spreading the uh, buckets in this manner, we are stretching out the uh, ITD buckets across all the nodes. So uh, important note on that, on the way that buckets allocate here. I do want to call uh, again one other uh, note which is important on a VPC configuration which we are dealing with here. If I do a show run services again to show you the configuration for the ITD that we had before, this is my second switch. As you can see, I'm switching between the two. If you notice, the configurations are identical and they have to be that way for this to function properly. The configuration order of the nodes is important and will allocate uh, the buckets accordingly. Had this been in a different order than switch two, then bucket one would have landed on whichever one was node one on that configuration. And therefore bucket one would be here, but on this guy, on this switch, bucket one would be on a different node. And therefore traffic that might be coming in on one switch, but returning back through the other side of the VPC would be then shunted to the wrong node and we would lose traffic because of it. So important note that the traffic or the configuration of ITD between two switches in a VPC configuration does have to be identical. I do ha currently already have traffic running, so I'm going to do a show ITD uh, inside statistics. This will help. Uh, this will show you the current statistics uh, of the ITD policy. As you can see here, uh, as seen before, I have four nodes or four buckets per node. But here we can actually start to see some uh, a bit more pertinent information. Uh, the buckets are assigned to this node. In the original node, information is inform uh, important if the we have a node that fails. There you will see that this bucket, for say, you know, if this bucket or this node had failed, these nodes would have been reassigned to this IP address. So in this column, you would see that instead of being to the address of 1.1.1, or excuse me, 1.1.1, it would have been to 1.1.2. But here you will see what the original node should have been. So if these were reassigned to a different node, you will get the information that these should have been originally assigned to this or were originally assigned to this, but have been moved because of a node failure due to probe uh, failure. And then here we can actually see the packets that they are balancing the amount of traffic through the no, uh, through each bucket. Uh, IX load here, and I am pumping 254 connections of HTTP traffic. And so here we can see that we've got the clients here. This is the number of simulated users. It's the blue line at the top. The actual uh, concurrent sessions, again, is the uh, kind of pinkish purple color. Uh, it does fluctuate a little bit because they are doing uh, gets of uh, an HTTP file. The file isn't particularly large, so it kind of steps through it and we are dealing with, uh, you know, gigabit interfaces. So it doesn't take long to get that file transferred. Um, and then so here again, we're looking at this is just some uh, information about uh, the traffic, how fast the uh, receives are here. And um, you can see here, uh, which is kind of interesting, is that we were looking at uh, control connections or connections uh, rejected, and um, there's none. So all the connections are coming in properly, which means that they have got to be flowing through the ASA's firewalls properly. So the um, interesting parts of or on both inside and out they will be landing on the appropriate SA on both directions uh, inside uh, of the firewall and then on the outside of the firewall. Uh, this concludes the demonstration of ITD on the 9000. Thank you.